Hello, welcome and good evening and another nice project here. I've gotten for um, two of these PCBs. They are also made by Matsu79. He already gave me the PS22 serial adapter schematics where I made um, the boards myself, but here two of these left from, yeah, well, this is basically a prototype of his new project, which is a 10D compatible sound card. 10D was a um, rather successful company for PCs and electronics in the 1980s. I think they belonged to Radio Shack, if I remember correctly. And they sold pretty decent PC compatible computers, but they also had their own standards like new graphics modes and new sound standard which was this thing. And at the core of the sound card is this chip here. This is the Texas Instruments SN, let me read it correctly. It's the SN76489. And this is the AN variant. And yeah, this is basically the same chip that's also used in the Sega Master System and a lot of 80s consoles and video game computers. And Tandy used that as well. Yeah, those boards here are pretty nice. They are black with uh, tinned pads, so they are probably pretty cheap, but they look very nice. Um, and I will use them, put them to good use, build two sound cards now, and test them and see if we get any games running, if they work. Hopefully they work. I had to um, buy the components, etc. from the bomb that was supplied with the, with the project. Yeah, so let's see if this will work out. And I will be giving one of the cards away. And I will probably keep this one. I'm not sure how many games I will find that work with this, but I think it's a nice little retro sound card. It's very compact. And a very nice feature of this thing is that it has a PC speaker input here and two um, adjustable potentiometers to mix both the uh, Tandy sound with the PC speaker sound and you can then send the PC speaker sound out of the audio jack here. So that's a really useful feature because there are a lot of games which only support PC speaker and usually you just put in like one of those cheap speakers here. And they're pretty loud, you can't tune the volume etc. So this is a nice side feature. Okay, let's get started. All right, so the whole card is now finished soldering and I had a few little problems programming the little ATtiny, tiny but I overcame those because I used the wrong command line on for AVR dude. Well, anyway, this is the end result and I think it looks pretty nice. It's still missing a bracket to mount in the PC, but we can use it just fine without it if we are careful. I will probably ask a friend to 3D print one because I think the bracket that I'm using for the AdLib card does not fit. I think the mounting holes are not the right size, but I'll check that. Of course a metal bracket would be nicer, but a plastic one will suffice. So the center piece of this sound card is this Texas Instruments SN76489 chip. It was used in a wide variety of consoles, the Master System, the 10D1000 PC series, also the IBM PC Junior used a similar chip, they are basically compatible. And yeah, you can still get them used basically for roughly one euro a piece, so they are not awfully expensive. And they are not even the most expensive part on this board. Anyway. The other nice feature of this little sound card is that you can actually set the port that the card uses. Standard for the Tandy sound is 0C0, 0, 
which might conflict on AT systems with the second DMA controller. If you are having troubles getting this running, you can use one of the other two addresses, but then you will most probably have to patch the game or install a TSR, which usually requires a 386 to do the port remapping. On the top left you also see the little Atma Tiny 13 controller, which basically only um, mutes the sound output if necessary. On startup you should put into your outer exit bat a little command line tool which mutes all the channels because on power on they will just produce noise and that's very annoying. So that's a little drawback from this card. I wonder if maybe the Atmel could just mute it by default, but I'm not sure if that works. I have to ask the guy who made this card, Matsu79, you see his name on the bottom right. And another nice feature of this card are these two things. They are potentiometers which will mix the speaker, PC speaker output and the Tandy output together, which is very useful because some games only have speaker support, PC speaker support, and that really is loud and annoying and you want to have the beeps for postcodes, etc. So it's very nice that you can plug the PC speaker output into this card and tune it so that it's not quite as loud as is as normal and it will be output to the audio jack on this card. So all in all I'm very pleased with this card. The bomb and some of the schematics are on the internet available but I think Matsu did not put up the board itself so that you can make your own but maybe this board will be sold later in the Serako shop which already sells a lot of retro sound cards and sound devices. You can follow the discussions on the Vogons forums and Matz's website. I will link to that in the video description. But now let's check out how this card actually performs or if it performs at all. And we will take a look at Space Quest 3 because the uh, later Sierra games have native Tandy sound support and also Maniac Mansion and Zack McCracken have Tandy sound support but they need a little patch that skips the Tandy BIOS detection. And last but not least we will have a short look at Stunts from Broderbund which also has native support for that nice little chip. And with that I would say all is said and thanks for watching. Please share, like and subscribe if you want to and see you next time. Bye-bye.